Hello everyone and welcome to another Minotaur Zombie Review Slash Thoughts, this time on cult classic PC game SWAT 4, developed by Irrational Games in 2005. Now if you don't know who Irrational Games is, well, you should. They're a very important, critically acclaimed developer that's made a lot of landmark titles, including System Shock 2 uh, and Bioshock later on. In fact, this game only came out two years before Bioshock, which I didn't even realize. This is a game I've always wanted to play, but it, it's only somewhat recently become available on GOG, and I think it's actually the only place where you can buy it these days. But I'm really happy to say, uh, like usual for GOG, no issues running it on a modern, modern operating system. It works great. But right off the bat, what is this game? Well. I don't have to worry about story spoilers too much here because there just isn't much of a story to say. You play as the boss, who is a veteran SWAT team member who gets transferred in to lead this new SWAT team in a big city. And the game really doesn't have an overarching plot so much, it's more just a string of missions of various situations that a SWAT team would have to deal with. It's actually really cool, they start off with some really low-key ones where there's only like a few people you might be charging into a house to stop like a serial killer but it quickly escalates into like full-blown like hostage situations where like a shootout in a nightclub or something like that and all of these events are like really well realized the voice acting in this game especially for the time is quite well done i think in the briefing sections where you're getting like the lowdown of what's happened and they have a lot of cool like backstory stuff and like a timeline like Here's when the call happened, SWAT team en route, SWAT team gets there, like a lot of like real world stuff in that regard. And they do, one of my favorites is like they do, sometimes they'll have like a 911 call that you can listen to that kind of like details what the mission's about. 911 emergency, 107, hello? There's, there's a woman with a gun at the gas station. I think there was a gunshot, but I, I drove away. What's the address? I, I don't know. It, it's on Pitkin, off the interstate, and I, I think I saw someone else in the store. Can you give me an exit number? Um, it's not on every mission, which is kind of a bummer, but they do a really good job setting up all of these situations. Now, there's a little bit of personality to your SWAT teammates, like they all have names, and occasionally they'll remark uh, during a mission about like some kind of witty quip or something, but sometimes it gets drowned out by all of the action. With that said, what is this game? Well, it's obviously a first-person shooter, as you can tell, but at the same time, that just isn't doing enough justice for it because it really is something unique and different. It's more of a realistic, like, SWAT team, first-person shooter simulator kind of game. The closest thing I can think of is, like, the original Rainbow Six games. Not, like, the new ones, but, like, the original ones where you're, like, plotting your route and telling your AI squad mates to, like, do certain things. It's not quite that as involved here, but honestly, the gameplay is very start and stop in that you'll stack up on a door, you'll clear out a room, and then the action stops for a little bit. And then you'll stack up on another door, get ready to basically breach another room, and in that time, you're thinking about how you're going to do it, you're going to plan, you're going to stick your little mirror under the door and see if you can see, any see anyone, and then you're going to tell your team to stack up maybe throw a grenade in before they go, maybe blow the door off its hinges. That's your choice, and that's the kind of stuff that's going to determine whether you win or lose. So far, it sounds like a typical first-person shooter, right? Well, this is where things get interesting, because you actually have to follow the rules of engagement. If you don't know what those are, it's basically a set of rules that SWAT would have to follow before they can use lethal force. As the training mission at the very beginning of the game tells you, SWAT is, first and foremost, a life-saving operation, not a life-taking operation. And so, you can't just shoot all of the bad guys the second you enter a room. The very first thing you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to shout compliance at them, tell them to get down on the ground, drop their weapon, and then from there it escalates very quickly in, like, very short time frames. You have to see what they're doing, because if they're just have their gun at rest you can't do anything but there's a lot of specific situations that you'll that you'll learn over time playing the game like if they and even i'm not entirely sure on some of them because the game doesn't exactly do the best job of explaining exactly all of the specifics of rules of engagement in the training mission but some of the things seem to be like if the enemy fires a fire fires their gun whatsoever it's free game if their gun is at the rest and they're not pointing it at anyone that's not free game you have to shout compliance if they're pointing their gun at a hostage or you, 
then you have to show compliance, but if they keep doing it, then you have free reign to take them down. And it's these kinds of things that really amp this game up into, like, the intensity. And this is where the start and go- the start and stop happens. It's every- everything is like a little microcosm of excitement. Because you'll clear a room, and generally you have all the time in the world to plan your next move. Enemies don't usually pop through doors too often, sometimes they will, but it's all about prepping for the next room and making sure you get it right, because one wrong step could see you lose the entire mission, and these missions can be like close to 30 minutes long towards the end of the game. For all of these reasons and how complex the game is to some degree, it is highly recommended that if you do decide to play this game, you really, really should play the training mission right away to get accustomed to the controls, because you're going to be ordering your squad around a lot, and I think it deserves special mention of how easy it is to actually order your squad around to a certain degree. It's just one right click away, hold down right click, and you bring up a menu, you can tell your team to stack up on a door, open, throw a grenade, do all of these things, and it works really, really well. And to be honest, especially for this time, to have the pathfinding that your squad has and how well they are able to get in position and not do stupid things is really staggering. Like, it is very impressive. And I think you can tell that there's a lot of care that went into these levels. There seems to be specifically programmed spots for, you, for your squad to stand on each separate door so that they're not doing something dumb like standing in the line of fire of someone when they open it. There's just a lot of care taken because because when you're playing the single player experience, a lot of it is, almost all of it really, is working with your AI teammates to do things right. And they do a surprisingly great job. Um, in fact, they will be the ones that are almost always faster than you at taking someone down when lethal force needs to be used. And in some ways, this is almost kind of more of a armchair general kind of game. Because if you die, it's com it's automatic mission fail. But if your AI teammates die, you're going to get points deducted, but you still have a chance to win. And so you're going to be using your commands, and a lot of times they're going to be the ones going in first, and you'll be covering the rear. It's not a game where you're 100% always involved, but it's always intense, especially those situations. If you ever have a mission where all of your AI teammates are got down, and it's just you, and it's a... Somet sometimes it might be a race against time. And man, that stuff gets intense, because everything happens so fast in this game. Get down and put your hands up. Get down. Do it. Suspect this is entry team. There's, There's a full-blown casino in the base now. Be prepared for additional suspects. Bang and clear. Setting charge. Suspect in sight. Suspect down. Put your hands Moving in the air. Do it down. Put your hands in the air. Get clear. Is Suspect clear. is compliant. Hands up. This one won't give up. Suspect is alive. Don't need to ask clean your gambling tank. If you blink, it might be too late. Like this game is gonna put some Counter Strike twitchy players to the test at some points. Another thing that's pretty cool about this game is how you can custom tailor all of your equipment, and it does pay to do this based on your mission descriptions. Uh, for example, if there's going to be a lot of civilians around, you don't want to bring a shotgun with buckshot along, because that's just going to lead to disaster. Meanwhile, if you know that the peop that the bad guys are wearing armor, or they're wearing gas masks, it doesn't really pay as much to bring gas grenades, like CS gas grenades, to make them comply. There's a lot of things like that that are just very cool. It actually gets expanded on a lot more in the expansion pack, which also comes with the SWAT gold. They actually, some new weapons get unlocked over time. The weapon diversity isn't, like, super complex. Uh, you have a couple shotguns, a non-lethal shotgun, a paintball gun that shoots, uh, tear gas, or tear gas balls. It's weird. And a few different, you know, a, a lot of the special type grenades, stun grenades, gas grenades, um, stinger grenades, um, all of that stuff's really cool. Customizing your loadout is a lot of fun. But... At the same time, I would really get your... Take the training mode seriously when you're playing around with the weapons so you actually know which ones you like because the recoil on this game 
is like again this kind of goes back to it's a lot different game than a lot of other first person shooters if you think the recoil in counter strike is exaggerated this game like penalizes you for swinging your mouse too fast like if you do a 180 that's gonna hurt your recoil you really have to like it takes a while to adjust for sure and it's really fun once you do but there's definitely like a learning curve period and that that can really be said about this entire game because you are gonna forget and you're gonna get points deducted at the end of a mission and I keep bringing up points I haven't even basically at the end of each mission you're graded and depending on your difficulty level that you set is how many points you're gonna need to actually pass the mission and so every time you basically kill someone without shouting compliance or like use lethal force when you didn't follow the rules of engagement that's like minus 10 and so if you're playing on normal difficulty you need at least 50 points by the end of a mission um if you're playing on hard i think you need like 75 which is pretty hard and that's kind of where you're graded you're allowed to make a few mess ups here and there but not too many and that's where it feels just right now generally i'm usually pretty iffy on point systems like this but the thing i really like about this game that makes it makes so much sense is that even when you could use lethal force you'll get more points for taking them down in a non-lethal way so it always encourages that risk reward kind of feel because it's always riskier to take them down with non-lethal force that's another aspect of this game that just really makes it exciting the whole way through and makes every engagement kind of unique now there isn't a ton of missions in the game but what is there is really, really good, and the game definitely begs to be replayed, because every time you restart a mission, it's never exactly the same thing twice. Like, the map layout is the exact same, but where civilians and enemies are is somewhat randomized every time. Obviously, they're pre there's preset locations of where they could spawn, but where they're actually at is a little bit different every time. So you always need to, even if it's a mission that you almost beat but failed right at the end, you need to approach it as if it's wholly new the next time you restart it, because it will be a little bit different. You can't expect enemies to be in the same spots, and if you do, you will lose. It's, it's a game that you can't rush, you gotta be patient with it, and I think that's what made it really fun for me, and why it's a cult classic to this day. It's something very, very different, and unlike anything else. One of the complaints I actually had in the base game was that uh, they actually allow you to split up like red and blue team and do two separate things. Um, like you could tell blue team to go over and watch this door while you take red team and do something else. But it was always a little bit clunky in that you could never, like let's say there was a room and there was a door on this side and a door on this side. And I wanted blue team to like bust through the door on this side where red team like threw a stun grenade over here and so it was kind of like a pincer attack. You could never really do that fluently, or like fluidly in the base game because you can't order commands at the same time to both. You can in a way, but it's not very good and it's always gonna be a little offset because you're gonna be trying to shout at both, both teams at the same time. They fix this in the expansion actually because they allow you to like tell a team to hold an action and then tell the other team to do something else. And you can tell them to both do it at the same time, and that's awesome. Now, the whole split-up team thing is really cool in practice, but it does also feel like a bit of a missed opportunity, just because you never really need to use it much. I really only found that it was useful for me on one mission in the base game, and honestly, there was never really any times where it felt needed in the expansion pack. But it's still a really cool feature, and the ability to, like, take control of, like, what they're seeing when they're far away from you is a really cool feature and that's actually how you order commands to the other squad when you're far apart the game is just like a really big like replayable game and it's even more so than just replaying the standard missions i think one of the neat things is that there's actually like this entire like custom mission creator to a certain extent to where you can take a map from the existing game and completely tweak what kind of characters there are you can set whether the player is going to have restrictions on certain loadouts restrictions on difficulty how many civilians how many bad guys um what kind of weapons they have and that's really cool like if i would have played this back in the day and i had another friend that had it i could totally see us getting some like flat like some floppy disks or something and swapping like mission files back and forth to each other and be like can you beat it and even just setting some up for yourself just to like challenge yourself or like throw weird situations in there is pretty dang cool. Now with all of this said, I do have some complaints and it mostly applies to some of the missions that definitely get on the longer side. This is a fairly tough game and you will fail missions at times. 
especially some of the later ones in the base game, they can get really difficult. Um, the last mission in particular took me probably at least six tries, maybe at least. Um, if you don't count the times where I messed up, like within the first 30 seconds, and I was like, well, yeah, we're just <laughs> we're gonna start from scratch. Sometimes the game gets a little bit too wrapped up in trying to be a realistic simulator to a certain extent. The constant, basically every time you do anything, um, whether it's cuff an enemy or make them comply, like cuff a civilian or cuff an enemy, you're required to report them into command, which is simple enough. You just put your cursor over them and hit the interact key and you'll report it into command. But it gets really tedious to do this for every single enemy. And it's fine if you miss a few, but you're going to get docked points at the end. So obviously you're going to want to try and get all you can. It just kind of adds into like a busy work, especially when there's a ton of civilians and a ton of enemies in some of these later missions. It feels like a lot of your time is spent cuffing civilians, reporting them in. And even worse is you're supposed to pick up every gun that gets dropped by either an incapacitated or killed a bad guy and the thing is is like sometimes these get trapped underneath their bodies and you just can't get to them and you just gotta shrug and say well I guess I'm gonna get docked points because I can't find it. it it got caught behind the couch and I'm never gonna be able to click on that uh, that aspect is frustrating it just adds a lot of busy work to the game sometimes I just because the game already like stops and starts enough by going in you know between each room it would be really nice if some of that stuff wasn't as required. But as it stands, is this a game that you should... Oh, and I haven't even, I haven't even talked about the multiplayer, which I actually haven't had a chance to play, but I'm pretty sure it's still functional, actually, through this GOG version. I can't speak to it, but knowing what I know about this game, I have to imagine if you could get together a group of friends to play this multiplayer online, just cooperatively, and I think there might even be like a competitive kind of thing, I don't know anything about that, but even cooperatively, this would be a blast if you had a lot of friends who were similarly skilled and to, to play this game with. The thing is, I say similarly skilled because if... This is the kind of game where, like, one person could really drag it down. Like, if he accidentally shoots a civilian, it's like, mission failed for everyone. <laughs> um, or if he does something dumb. But it would be this... If you want, if you want like, a tactical, like, you need a, you need a voice chat kind of game to make it work... Um, and you you really got to communicate with your teammates. This is a game for it like this game is seriously tactical You can't just rush in guns blazing and it's a blast I I hope I can play the multiplayer one day because it sounds like it'd be really fun as it stands though Is this a game you should like still worth playing today? Absolutely, this is something wholly, wholly unique. I can't think of anything else quite like it that I've played. Like I said, the closest thing I've come to is like the original Rainbow Six games, and to be honest, I didn't care for those too much, because they got a little bit too deep into the tactics where you're like plotting routes for people pre-mission, and at the same time, that's just kind of a twitch shooter game. This adds more elements in there about what, sh what to do and how you can interact with the enemies. So definitely give it a look. It is, uh, it's definitely an Irrational Games game through and through. It's a unique premise. You can tell there was a lot of passion behind it. They did a lot of research. You can tell it's just something very fun. And it's not that long. It's a good playthrough. Check it out.